Hello, my name is Jacqueline Burkpile and I am the editor at Church Pop. I'm here with Jim Wahlberg, one of the producers for Jesus Thirsts, The Miracle of the Eucharist. How are you, Jim? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. How about yourself? Good. Great. So let's just get started. Um, can you explain to our viewers your role in the film and um, in, in Jesus Thirsts? Sure, so, um, hmm. I guess it really started a couple of years ago. Uh, I came out to Orange County to speak at the uh, Legatus group out here and, uh, and met Deacon Steve Greco. Um, and uh, we started to talk about, he wanted to make a film about the Eucharistic revival. And so he, you know, we talked and he said, I want to make a film about the Eucharistic revival. And I said, I don't want to make that movie. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, eh. I said, uh, Deacon, we got a big problem in the church. You know, he was talking about evangelizing on this grand scale, and I was like, we got this huge problem in, the, in our church. You know, over 70% of the people don't believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. I said, we need to make that movie. We need to talk about that specifically. And uh, he, he said, yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. And, you know, but he wanted to, obviously, he wanted to make a broader film. And so um, I agreed to, um, to making that film. And we were kind of still, we didn't, really, we didn't really have a lot of focus and direction on what specifically we would do. And ultimately, um, I just, I knew that I wanted to get people that were a lot smarter than me as it relates to our faith to sort of, sort of walk us through it, if you will. And, uh, and you know, hopefully, spend some time um, unraveling the Eucharist for folks. You know, I, I wanted to. Uh, I, I always want to sort of over-explain everything to my audience, if you will, and improve everything to them. And so, I was really, I think, overly focused on Eucharistic miracles. And I had been chasing Dr. Scott Hahn around, trying to talk to him and figure out if, if he would be willing to be involved in this film. Somebody actually gave me his phone number. I called and I didn't get him a couple times. And um, it was a Sunday afternoon. And on Sunday afternoon, I'm not allowed to be on the phone. My wife just saying, I work a lot. She's like, Sunday, no. And so we were at a park. We were with other families and having a great time and my phone was vibrating because I can't seem to shut the thing off and I looked down and I said Dr. Scott Hahn and I was like uh oh so I went and I was hiding behind a tree because I had I figured I had to take this call and so he said hi Jim it's Dr. Scott Hahn uh, I don't think he even referred to himself as doctor I think he said it's Scott Hahn here and uh, he said tell me about the movie that you want to make and um and so I was talking to him, and I spent a little bit of extra time talking about Eucharistic miracles. And he said, hmm, he said, if I may. He said, instead of spending so much time on Eucharistic miracles, maybe we could just spend more time on the miracle of the Eucharist. And I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. <laughs> and I said, and you're the person. It's, it's, I want you to help us make that transition. And, um, and he, in that phone call, agreed to participate. And, uh, and a lot of my friends, uh, gratefully, uh, Chris Stefanik and Father Don Calloway and Father Chris Alar are people that I know and that I have relationships with. And um, they were all eager to participate and eager to help us go on this journey. And, um, and what we've done and, and what we've come up with and what, um, what we get to share with the world is gonna be beautiful. It's beautiful and we're, we're very thrilled with the way it came out. And I think that it will, will, it's cause for conversation. Can you give me a little bit about, a little bit of a brief overview about your background and, um, you especially focused you in the film mm. about prison ministry. Yeah. Can you just tell me why you think, or along with your background, and why you think prison ministry is so important? Mm. 
Well, let me just say that there's a lot of people out there doing a lot more prison ministry than I am. Uh, I'll tell you that. Deacon uh, Tommy at uh, Styles Prison in Texas, in Beaumont, Texas, is a great man. He loves the Lord and he is serving with every bit of energy he has in his body. Um, you know, I, we could learn a lot from those guys in that prison. I was, uh, I was blown away. You know, I, you, sometimes we get caught up in, or I get caught up in, um, not so much about when I go to places or when I speak or I share my testimony. I'm crystal clear on the fact that it ain't about me. It's about Jesus, right? It's not about me. But, you know, I'm human. And you, know, you go places and people are like, hey, can I take a picture with you? Or you sign something. And I'm like, okay. And, but you, it, sometimes it can get confusing. And um, I went into that prison and, and maybe was thinking, you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm a guy that had this experience and I'm coming back to share with these poor guys. I got way more out of it than, than I brought to it, I can tell you that. I met men in love with Jesus, in love with the Eucharist, um, that were really joyful. A guy told me, I'm the happiest I've been in 10 years, and I'm doing life. Um, so it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. It was a beautiful opportunity to, to be with them and to have the opportunity to, um, to have mass with uh, Bishop Toops and to have adoration and, um, and then to spend a little bit of time sharing God's love and mercy and in, in, in the graces that I've been, uh, that I've, the graces I've had poured out over me. You know? So why did you choose prison ministry in the film of all things? Was that just for the film or do you do you do that regularly? So I do it, I do it. I'm, I'm, I'll be in a prison in Grand Rapids, Michigan in a couple of weeks and, I, and last year I, I went there as well. Um, that's where I found Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's I mean, I, I feel like you're more likely to find Jesus in the dark, dingy places in the world than you are in the brightly lit, everybody's happy kind of places. Um, and where is where is he needed more? Right. Where is he needed more? And the, the people are completely hopeless, helpless in despair, in the darkest, you know, violent dangerous places, right? Um, it's funny, I was sharing a little while ago with somebody a little bit of my testimony and I was talking about when I was in prison and how prison is, is not that different from like the second grade or high school, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a bunch of people who are trying to impress other people and trying to fit in and trying to find their way and, uh, and to create the illusion that they're really cool or really tough or really, you know, the same stuff you're doing in high school, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can remember being in, in maximum security state prison and walking through the dining room. And prison is a very segregated place. So it's segregated by race, ethnicity, religion, neighborhood, geography, er in every way that you can segregate, that's segregated. And so all the people at each table are very similar to each other and from the same backgrounds, if you will. And uh, I can remember walking through that dining room and I knew people at most tables. And at each table, as I was walking by, I would stop and say hi. And at each table, I would be a different person. I would be the person, I would assimilate to them and to the way they talked, right? Um, and I never had an original thought or an original opinion. It was all about trying to find acceptance, you know, and uh, it's a sad place to be. Mm -hmm. So why do you think, why do you think people should see this film? Hmm. 
when over 70% of the people in the pews don't believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, then we got a problem, right? We got a big problem. And so um, for those that are, that think it's a symbol, right? They're not, they're not adamantly opposed to the concept of Jesus or they, they are actively participating in the faith, except this one key element, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's an opportunity, I think, for them to learn more and to take this journey. And I really, really hope that people will see this film in, in community or fraternity and will go with groups from their church or from their prayer groups or whatever, right, from, from school um, so that they can have a conversation. You know, I think this is, this is definitely um, a film that should cause conversation, for sure. And uh, we're hoping, and we're, what we're hearing is, is that our bishops and our priests are out promoting and are, are encouraged and excited about this film. Um, and so we're just now gonna let God do what God does. We're gonna be the foot soldiers. We're gonna do all that we can. Um, Hopefully, you know, this will be uh, a time for, for, for reflection and investigation mm -hmm. for people. And what do you hope people take from it? That Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist and that, you know, we, uh, Scott Hahn, a great man, uh, talks about when he first, he was invited, he was Protestant, and he was invited to uh, adoration. And he went into this chapel, and, and I'm trying to chop the story up bad, I'm bad with other people's stories, but ultimately he realized, he knew. That's Jesus right there, that is Jesus. And he couldn't, he couldn't stop looking at him. He went in thinking, this is crazy, and left with, oh my God, that that's Jesus is truly present, and um, and so somebody had told him about an adoration chapel that he could go to, and it, you know, it starts at six o'clock, and he was like, hey, God, I get there early. He's figuring that Jesus is going to be there. Place is going to be packed, and he went, and it was like, where is everyone? Like this don't make any sense, but there was no doubt in his mind that he was looking at Jesus, um, and so I hope that. Um, if folks will just, after seeing the film, just commit to go, just go to adoration. Just go for, just go for a few minutes. Just, and you don't have to do any, you don't have to say anything, you don't have to know anything. Just go and be present and just, just listen. Is there anything else you would like to tell our viewers about this film? June 4th, 5th, and 6th. A thousand screens across the United States, two screenings a day. Um, there's really no excuse. If you go to fathom.com, uh, you can find your location. You punch it in, it's going to recognize where you are already. Or you can punch in your zip code and it'll tell you all the theaters um, where it's playing. So just get there. Just get there. Make the commitment. Get there. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim, for being no, with me today. No, I really appreciate my it. My pleasure. <laughs>